doing? Well, hey, how about my favorite high school biology teacher? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Last night I found this really cool science uh, CD. It's supposed to help the kids learn the respiratory system. The instructions say they'll be able to rotate, magnify, and even run simulations. I think that's really going to help. Uh, it sounds very interesting, too. Uh, and anything that's going to help our kids with, with their tax scores has got to be, has got to be great. Great. Well, I'm so, going to try it today. I'll let you okay. know how it goes. Yes, please. Because we can share that with other science teachers if they have other science projects. Sure. Good morning, students. Today we're going to be talking about the ins and outs of the respiratory system. I'm going to be pairing you up at a computer. You'll have a computer simulated respiratory system to work with. I'm going to give you a worksheet, and this is what I'd like for you to do. I'd like you to identify the various components of the respiratory system, determine the function of each component, and explain how everything works. Go ahead and begin. Thank you, Miss. No pictures. Okay, Joan. List these parts of the respiratory system. Trachea, lungs, bronchi, bronchioles. Bronchi what? Now let's see if we can make this guy breathe. You got that? I'm still on lungs. Put the name of the lobes here. No, not there. Down here. Then you do it. This here is the middle lobe. This here is the lower lobe. L-O-B-E, not L-O-W-E. You said lower. What does it say to do next? You have the directions. Uh, let's see. Oh, now we're supposed to figure out what the diaphragm of the rib cage does during respiration. Quit moving the model so fast. Honestly, I have to tell you this every time we do labs together. You change what's on the computer screen so fast that I can't get everything down on the worksheet. So Come on. Write faster. Stop playing around and turn the screen a little bit so at least I can get some of it. So, who can tell me what do the diaphragm and the rib cage do when we breathe? The diaphragm moves down and the rib cage moves out. That's right. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle just below the lungs and when we breathe it tightens and moves downward. At the same time, the muscles between the ribs pull the rib cage upward and outward. Now which process are we talking about here? Inhaling or exhaling? Inhaling! Good. Can you explain why you know it's inhaling? Well, the diaphragm flattens out and the rib cage moves forward so there's more room inside the chest so the air can come out. Good job, Keith. So what happens when the air enters the chest? I know, I know. Air goes through the trachea and into the bronchioles and into the alveoli. What happens when the air gets to the alveoli, Mark? Well, the alveoli are surrounded by lots of little blood vessels. The oxygen in the air passes through the membranes between the alveoli and the blood vessels and then goes into the blood. Excellent. Now which muscle does most of the work while we breathe? The diaphragm. Right. About how many times a minute does a typical adult inhale and exhale? About 10 to 16 times. Is that when we're resting or working hard? When we're resting. It's faster when we're running or something. Praise oh, small spurs. Yes, you Gemship. have homework. You're going to have to do a one-page essay on the respiratory system. A whole that we page. Have today. A whole page. Half a page. Class Come on, half, half a page. Half a page. One page. Oh. Man, 
how about those Spurs? God, what a game. What a game. We were so excited about them winning. Man. Oh, hey, how did that new software work out? Well, actually, I'm kind of disappointed about it. I was so um, convinced that it was going to make a difference in my classroom. But listen to the scores. Mark, 95, Bo, 100, Diana, 80, Keith, 100, Carol, 85, Oliver, 90. So for some kids, it made a big difference. And then for some other kids, it didn't make any difference at all. You know, maybe the software is the problem. Hmm. I wonder if maybe if we just have another class work with it, or maybe if you do your second class. Yeah, maybe I'll try it with a different class. Maybe that's the difference. So how did the boys do much better than the girls in our on our test scores? What could have Miss McNaught have done differently with her class? Is it a computer software problem? Or is there some other strategies she could have used?